know some of you are thinking, because you were here last week about how Jesus used saliva, remember, on the tongue, and put it into the ear and that stuff. You're thinking, oh my goodness, now this week, um, do you want my tongue to press it? Better <laughs> <laughs> than someone else's mouth. That's why they're disposable, right? Yes, disposable. There is a hymn, and it contains these words. Oh, Master, let me walk with you. Help me the slow of heart to move by some clear winning word of love. Teach me the way would feet to stay and guide them in the homeward way. The tongue, the tongue, the tongue. It can set a forest ablaze, like one tiny little match. It needs to be tamed. I mean, we can go to SeaWorld, we can go to the circus, and there are lions, and tigers, and bears that can be tamed, and seals, and whales to do fancy tricks. But James says, the brother of our Lord says, taming the tongue is not gone near impossible. Apart from the grace of God, the work of the Holy Spirit, the living, breathing Word of God, the tongue wants to do its own thing. James has some words to say about the tongue, especially those who are in the teaching profession. Now, if I had started today and I said, let's name the top five professions that are the most dangerous, my guess is that you would not probably have said something like, well, Sunday school teachers, or parochial or public school teachers, although in recent years, the classroom has become kind of a violent place and school buildings can become dangerous, right? But according to James, the brother of our Lord, who wrote a book, five chapters long, the book of James, or also the Sermon of James, He's preaching to the choir. The brother of our Lord, some people call the book of James the Proverbs of the New Testament. I think that James is a commentary on Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Jesus, Rabbi Jesus, the teacher Jesus. In Matthew's Gospel, five teaching sections. The most famous probably, the teaching or Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And so I think James has written a commentary on that sermon or that teaching section. And in today's epistle reading, he wants us to understand um, how dangerous the tongue can be, especially if you are a teacher. Did you hear what James said in chapter 3? Not many of you, brothers and sisters in Christ, should become teachers because you know that we who teach, preach the Word of God, will be judged more strictly. Did you catch that today? Good thing that we didn't have this before we were trying to recruit Sunday school teachers. Right? You see, I, this is an honorable, noble profession. The profession of faith and teaching, right? We should respect our teachers. But it is also an awesome responsibility. Because when we teach with words, with the same tongue, we can destroy children or people, or we can build them up. We can speak the truth, or we can propagate lies. That's probably why Jesus said, you know these words of Jesus, anyone who causes a little one, a little one, who believes in me to stumble, it would be better for them to have a millstone. You know that great big grinding stone? I mean, they were big and heavy. It would be better to have a millstone around their neck and they'd be thrown into the depths of the sea than they cause a little one who believes in me to stumble. You see why James says what he does? Not many of you, brothers and sisters in Christ, should become teachers. Because you know that we, and you see James is looking in the mirror, 
He's preaching to the choir. He said, you know that we who teach, who preach the word of God, will be judged with greater strictness. In my first parish in Lake Lillian, Minnesota, up by Wilmer, I was there in church one Sunday morning, and one of our organists, a young man named Rick Nordine, he uh, went to Oxford College. And uh, we're going over the hymns and the liturgy, making sure that we're on the same page. And then all of a sudden, the conversation switched. And uh, he was talking about preaching. He said, you know, Pastor Dave, not everybody likes what you preach. Not everybody agrees with what you have to say and teach. I said, oh. I said, so what do you say to them? And Rick says, well, I tell them it doesn't bother me because it's just his opinion. Really? Really? Uh, Rick, I have some really strong opinions. And if people really want me to share them with them, I don't think they're going to like it. But God has not called me to pontificate my opinions on a Sunday morning. You see, I understand what James is saying. Those who preach and teach had better do it with humility and with honesty and with hesitancy. Because we will be held to a higher standard. And we will be judged by Almighty God more strictly. Because the tongue, the tongue, the tongue, it can preach the truth about Jesus, or it can destroy the faith in God's people. An honorable profession, but so very dangerous when it's misused. You see, not everyone who stands behind the pulpit or sits in a classroom has been called and appointed by God. I mean, there are some people, I've heard them, they say, you know, I think I'd like to be a preacher. I, I think I'd like to be a pastor. Really? You know what Mark Luther said? He said, you should only be a preacher if you can't outrun the call of God. Luther understood. He quaked and, and, and shook in his boots because he knew that you're dealing with the truth of God. And that truth cannot be dealt with lightly. Not many of you, brothers and sisters in Christ, should become teachers because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. When James is speaking about the tongue, he also says, we all stumble. Because we're not perfect yet. But that doesn't mean that we carelessly take the bit and the bridle, or the rudder of a ship, or the collar and leash away from the dog. You see? It needs to be controlled through God's Word, through prayer, through the Holy Spirit, so that we who preach and teach and daily life as members of the priesthood of all believers, do so with care and do so with faithfulness. There's a lot of false teaching going around. It's not new. St. Paul, when he wrote to the church in Galatia, he said, Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Somebody must have cast a spell on you. You got the gospel and now you've traded it in for some kind of a counterfeit. Why would you do that, Paul said. That's just nonsense. And then he says, if anyone, I mean anyone, Paul says, even an angel from heaven, even I myself, Paul says, if anyone come to you and starts preaching another gospel, which is no gospel at all, another gospel other than the gospel of Jesus Christ, crucified and risen for the forgiveness of your sins, let that person be accursed. Damned in the hell forever is what Paul says to the Galatians. Don't be foolish. I mean, Jesus said that there's going to be false teachers coming, and they're going to lead people astray. And what will they be? Well, they'll be pretend pastors. They'll be pretending to be sheep because they're dressed in sheep's clothing. 
but the ravenous wolves. And they seek only to destroy, to take away the faith. False teachers. That's why St. Paul, for example, says to his beloved Timothy, you know, Timothy didn't have a godly father. He had a godly mother and grandmother who taught him the faith. But Paul became a spiritual father to Timothy. And in 2 Timothy, at the end of, well, Paul's course, where he says, the time of my departure has come, right before that he says to Timothy, preach the word. Be it uh, urgent, in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort. Be unfailing in teaching and patience. Because the time is coming when people will have itching ears. And they will want to hear only what they want to hear. And they'll wander away from the truth Jesus in commits. Now, you know what I'm talking about, Rashford Lutheran. Because you, like I, was a part of a denomination that decided to walk away from Jesus, decided to walk away from the authority of Scripture. And you said, wait a minute, now i got the choice, a denomination or Jesus. Eternal damnation or eternal life with my Lord and Savior. You see, for you, you knew what you needed to do. We have to walk with the truth, right? And we've had the warnings, the instructions from Jesus and from his brother James and from St. Paul. Even to this day, it's just crazy some of the nonsense stuff that's going on. There was some, a professor in the religion department at Augsburg College. I know this because I served on the youth encounter board and a young gal, 19 years old, and I were having lunch, we, we paired up, and I said, so tell me about Oxford College. What's been the most exciting thing from your freshman year? And she kind of fell off and thought, and I'm not always patient and waiting, you know? So I, I said, how about this? What was the biggest surprise for you at Oxford College your first year? And she said, oh, that's easy. She said, you see, God raised me in a Christian family. I got the faith in my church and my mom and my dad. And my senior year of high school, I could hardly wait. I'm going to a Lutheran college. And I get to take during my freshman year, I get to take my religion Bible class. This is great. So she had to wait until January. And then she goes in for her freshman religion Bible class. And the professor, the teacher in the religion department at Oxford College, he stands up and he's got a Bible in his hand. And you know what he does? He says to the class, he says, there's two things you need to know in this class. First of all, I don't believe anything in this book. And secondly, I only read it in preparation for this class. I mean, there's a bishop, a presiding bishop, of a large Lutheran denomination that is tanking so fast you can't keep track of the numbers, who says, on record, there is no hell, and if there is, it must be empty. And I was preaching in a church over in Boston, well, maybe nine months ago, and during the adult study, one of the women, she looks at me and she says, you know, I'm troubled, Pastor. Because we've got a presiding bishop that says there is no hell, and if there is, it's empty. And I looked at her and I said, well, I'm glad you're troubled. Because here is a pretend pastor who is claiming to know more about heaven and hell than Jesus. And Jesus preached and taught about heaven and hell a lot. There was a few years ago when I was a pastor out in the Tacoma, Washington area, on Easter Sunday, in Olympia, in a Lutheran congregation, there was a pastor who on Easter Sunday who said, you know, the resurrection of Jesus is not essential to our faith. <laughs> well, when you think that the Bible is just a collection of opinions, you're going to be susceptible to all kinds of problems. 
obviously this pastor has never read 1 Corinthians 15. And if he has, he doesn't pay attention to it. Because Paul says, if Jesus hasn't been raised from the dead, you're not going to be raised from the dead. You're still in your sin. This is all one big joke. Right? And then Paul says, after a pause, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who fall asleep. You see? What James tells us is true. Beware. Be on your guard, right? Why? Well, because there are false teachers. There are people that creep into the pulpits and will tell you things that are contrary to the scriptures, to the word of God. Stand firm in your faith. Stay in the word each day. God has given us a tongue depressor. The Holy Spirit, His Holy Word, so that we can know the truth and be equipped to hold on to the truth and not to let it go. Not many of you, brothers and sisters in Christ, should become teachers because you know that we who teach the Word of God will be judged more strictly. Keep your tongue from evil. Keep your tongue from evil. Psalm 34, 13. Keep my tongue from evil. Keep my tongue from evil. An honorable profession of faith, but a serious one. And to be entered into only with hesitancy and humility and honesty. Because the tongue, the tongue, the tongue, one little match can set the forest ablaze. May God grant you ears to hear well the teachings of Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.